T-shirt quilts are a great way to get the rest of the life out of the T-shirts that we have loved for so long already. Today, I'm gonna show you how to cut them up and put them right back together. Let's get started. That's right, there are a several different ways to make great quilts featuring your favorite t-shirts. So today what I really want to try to focus on is some of the techniques we use to stabilize the t-shirts themselves so that you can make whatever design you want, whether you're adding your sashings or doing what we're going to do today, which is we're just going to use the t-shirts themselves to make up our blocks. So we're going to either use, like you see here, the logo itself or the logo and some added on t-shirt material to build up to make our squares all the same size size so that they will fit into columns as we go. So the first step we must do is prepare our t-shirts. So to prepare a t-shirt for t-shirt quilting, first purchase your favorite t-shirt and wear it and wash it and wear it and wash it forever, right? Until it starts to look a little bit like a new color, a little bit ratty, a little bit worn out. Mine always start to get stains and holes in them, of course. Now what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to stop and evaluate my design. So I want you to be thinking where you want to go with this project while I'm showing you the techniques of how to get there. The first thing we should really talk about is one of these cool June Taylor rulers that are made. So with this ruler, what I can really do is I can go through, if I've got a lot of different t-shirts with all different size logos, I can start to look through and decide what size cuts can I make all of my squares if I wanted all of the squares the same size. That's actually what sounds to be an easy method, but adding fabric to make your squares the same size I found was actually a much easier solution. But let me show you how this ruler would work if you want to use it. You're going to basically go ahead and find your dead center of the ruler, and you're going to kind of center the design, and I'm looking around the design and the lines and all of that. Then you'll also notice that down here there's a 10 and a half inch, a 12 and a half inch, and a 15 inch is the outer edges, and there's cutout. So you could technically put a chalk pen or pencil in, and you can actually make some markings here so that you could then get the entire square designed and come back and make all of your cuts. So that's one way. You would mark it through like yay, real light markings, you don't need much. like that, and then you would just simply use the ruler itself to cut the lines. But I wanted to maximize all of the fabric first. So I disassembled the shirt, and the way I did that is I actually took, and without even a ruler, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball up the arm. So we're gonna do this to both sides, like that. And we found out, we have a pet hamster at home. His, he's a teddy bear hamster, so of course we've named him Yogi. And Yogi loves to chew on his bars at night. And that keeps us all awake at home. So what we've learned is he would rather have something fun, cloth, to pull into his cage. So he started eating up all of our old kitchen towels and stuff. And so now we found he loves the sleeves from the t-shirt. So we put a sleeve once a week in his cage and he tears it all up and makes his fun little nests and stuff. And not ridiculous, but hamsters love that kind of thing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top seam out first. And because I'm trying to maximize my fabric, I'm going to then just kind of, well, the tag is not going to show up nicely in our quilt. So that's off of there here. And then I'm going to fold this under so then I can take this line off like this. And then the last two we have are just down here at the bottom. So I basically have gotten all of my surged edges or all of my seams out of my t-shirt material. And now it is technically just fabric, but it is not very stable. So if you were gonna use something fantastic like a sashing, then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and stabilize all of your t-shirt material. Or if you're gonna put shirt to shirt, you want to stabilize all of your t-shirt material. So June Taylor also has a fantastic stabilizer out there that comes in a package and it's a giant sheet, which I love because technically, design idea, you could use this as a foundation and build your shirts right on it because it's normally this giant piece. This is what's left over from the shirt quilts I've already been working on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my logo design 
and I'm going to put it face down on my ironing board. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press it first to try to get all of the creases out because I want my fusible stabilizer to go on and stabilize all of this material so that it doesn't flex. It will still have a wonderful hand on it when we're ready to use it as a quilt, but it will be much easier to sew some very nice seam lines as we're working. Okay, so with that, once I have, I'm going to go ahead and grab my fusible interfacing and or stabilizer. And like I said, this is specifically designed for the t-shirt quilts. There's a rough side on it. So I'm feeling, closing my eyes and feeling, and that rough side's in my fingers. So the rough side is the glue side, and the glue goes on the back of our t-shirt. It will get on your ironing board if you're not careful, so you don't want to iron past that. So right here is the edge of my t-shirt, so I'll often rough cut with my scissors to make sure that I'm maximizing my interfacing stabilizer, but I'm also not getting anything stuck to my ironing board. Like that. And then what I found I like to do is I'm going to start down here in a corner and I'm going to slowly let that glue bond. And then I'm just going to work myself up the fabric as I go. Just like that. You might be able to hear there's a little bit of steam function going on in my iron right now. And I'm not going all the way to the top of my interfacing because I didn't rough cut that, but I can see through the interfacing that my t-shirt has ended. One of the next tricks I learned was I'm going to go ahead and let that cool while we chat for a second because I don't want to be manipulating it, moving it all around while it's still warm. That could cause the glues to break down, right? So now I can bring it back into my cutting area. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after my logos first. So to get the logo, I'm going to take that ruler. And of course, you can still see those wonderful chalk marks. So I could then cut it as intended if I was trying to make everything the same size. But here's another trick I'll show you. This is if you're manipulating all of your logos you're on your own. Let's go here to this shorter side that I have remaining and choose something like, let's say, that's going to be two and a half, two and a quarter inches. So what I'm really doing is I'm looking at this line across the top of the sewing machine logo and this line here along the sewing machine logo. I'm making sure that all of these lines look nice and crisp and that means I'm squaring or centering the design and now I know I've got a two and the little line that's on my ruler gap. So I'm going to make this cut straight through so that that's clean there. And that's clean there. Of course, I was talking and remember our rule, measure twice, cut once. And I went three lines over here and two lines over there. So I should have slid this in just like that because you see that was what I was really going for. No big deal. I have one less smaller scrap or I already have an inch scrap made. However you want to look at that, right? So now that I did those two sides, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my design. And again, I'm looking for two and a half or two and whatever that line is from that edge and from this edge now. So first I find the design and the ruler and then I come back and I double check that everything is running square with the lines I already cut, even if I just am eyeballing that. And then that will be trimmed and trimmed like this. And you probably noticed that I actually didn't cut all the way through because if I want a long and skinny strip later on, I wanted that long and skinny strip to work with. And that brings me to my next point. I also did the backs, whether they had logos on them or not, so that I had plenty of this extra fabric to work with. So then I just built a stack. And you can see that even my scraps still all have the interfacing st slash stabilizer on the back. So now let's build in a piece that's going to fit in. So what I want to do is I want to find a line where that's going to work. And I do want to use a nice true cut. So a nice straight cut because I'm going to do like quarter inch seam allowances. So we're going to trim this to begin with because I'm going to literally sew, then manipulate, sew, then manipulate as I work through this. 
So as I'm here, I'm now mounting right sides together, and I literally am giving myself a little bit here past, and a little bit down here past, so that as I come over to my sewing machine, I've got a edge guide on. I have cotton threads in my machine today because I'm doing a quilt. And I'm just double checking. Now one of the keys is here is I'm gonna kinda hold lightly. I'm not gonna push, I'm not gonna pull. I'm gonna let the machine do the work as it sews through. And at a little bit more of a medium to slow pace when I'm sewing, because I don't want to be stretching the fibers. And that interfacing is also there to help support that too. So now one of the other things I realize is as I made all of these t-shirt choices, not all t-shirts are actually created the same. Most are silk screened, but some nowadays are these really cool iron-ons. But iron-ons really shouldn't be ironed on again on the front side. So I just got in the habit of ironing most of my work from the back. That way, if one of my t-shirts was an iron-on design, I wasn't placing the iron directly on that transfer sheet that was created for the logo. So at first, I've got my seam nice this way. Now I can flip it back over so it looks beautiful like that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to manipulate off these edges. So I'm using a lot of the t-shirt that was already made as my straight line. So I can just continue that cut there. And I'm severely right-handed. So we're just gonna do it this way. Here's a fun trick to show you if I can hold still long enough, right? If I take the line here on that seam and this line, look how square that looks. Look how sharp that looks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off just like this. And then what I do is I grab the piece I've intended to attach it to. So let's say we wanna put that blue piece up in here now, okay? So with this, I'm gonna take an eyeball and make some new decisions. If I place this just like this, I personally am gonna feel like I just missed the seam allowance where those two lines didn't come together perfectly. So if I have that lined up. So what I really wanna now do is I wanna actually manipulate this and cheat it down a little ways so that it looks like it was intentional. So just like I put that strip onto the block, I can put this block onto the column I've already built the exact same way. I wanna double check one thing though. When my seam allowance comes up here, I don't want it to fall into my logo design. So right now I'm gonna cheat it back a little bit, make sure I'm cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over just like this. And then I would bring it to the sewing machine and begin to manipulate these seams as well. Let's talk about quilting a little bit while we're putting this last column on. And here's why. Because as I start to sew over the seams where the sashing met the blocks, a lot of t-shirt quilters will try to open those seams up to try to facilitate stitch in the ditch style quilting, which is something we do in a lot of t-shirt quilts. As you can see this seam approaching here, I don't worry about that because I like free motion and I'm gonna stitch near the ditch to secure everything, but I'm gonna most likely do more free motion work around the design. So I just let that seam just fall to one side the way it was pressed. And now we'll sew through here. Again, at that nice medium little pace. And now we'll be ready to go ahead and do the same thing. Let's press the seam over this way. Oops, I just did exactly the opposite of what I was trying to show you. <laughs> Sometimes I think so much about what I wanna say, I forget what I'm actually really doing here. I hopefully you'll forgive me. We are all human here at Man Sewing. All right, so there we've got that seam allowance. And if you are all on your very best behavior, I promise to come back later and talk more about machine quilting and free motion quilting on t-shirt quilts. I'll make up this whole quilt for us and we'll quilt it together. I think that would be a lot of fun. But first we gotta build the quilt, so that's what we're talking about today. Back here, you can see the same things going on. So I'm gonna do the same trick I did earlier. Here I have 
a line across here. There's my corner. I can go ahead and trim this. And this, did I get that first cut? I'm not very left-handed, we've already mentioned that. Okay, so that's trimmed down, and my column just keeps growing and growing, and I bring in my next column, and the way I love to design is I just manipulate as I go, manipulate as I go, because if at all possible, follow me to the quilt back here, here's what I want to really show you, some fun ideas, okay? First, if you look at the whole quilt, you really don't see many columns. If you look really closely, you see a couple of major rows going throughout the quilt. But look at this, this is what I love. There's four squares that are the same size put together to make like a four patch. And then that four patch comes together and manipulates into the same size square here. So this quilt itself was actually designed with you the, using the squares and bigger blocks that were all equal sizes. Where mine, I build each square by adding sashing as I go to manage it. Mostly because I'm using just a few different designs in my shirts and this will make more character in the all over design. So to sum it up for you all today, the basic techniques you need to know is you must stabilize your t-shirt so they're super easy to work with. Your whole t-shirt was purchased for the design itself. So therefore that becomes the fabric. So make sure you treat the design with respect and get it the way you need it, whether that's using your ruler or you're just eyeballing and manipulation techniques, right? Enjoy putting it all together and then remember, it is a super snuggly, these are quilts that ends up on the couches. So on the back of the quilts, we often use something like Minky, which is on the back of this one, gives a bunch of wonderful character. Or I also love some of these fantastic flannels because the feel of the flannel matches the feel of the t-shirt and puts it all together and makes a fantastic gift item for those people that loved the t-shirts as much as you loved them. So I know it's a lot of technical info and a little bit of sewing fun today here at Man Sewing. We appreciate you encouraging all of these new ideas. The bell has rung, so it is time for me to sign off. We'll catch you next time right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.